Changes to Oriana, Nunu, Shen, Karthus, Soraka, and LeBlanc in this episode of the Patch Preview. Welcome, Summoners, to the League of Legends Patch Preview. I'm Freak, and I'm here with Morello, Lead Champion Designer. Together, we'll be discussing some gameplay changes coming into the next update for League of Legends. Note that this video does not cover every single change, but will explain the thought process behind some of our decisions. Oriana is an extremely high-skilled champion, constantly repositioning the ball to play well. However, she's held back by feeling a bit unresponsive. In the Jace update, we're making a few specific changes to clean up her gameplay. First, we're shortening the global cooldown on her abilities, so that abilities can be chained together much more quickly. Second, we're lowering the cooldown on command attack, but lowering its damage, while increasing the AP ratio on command dissonance. Third, we're increasing the cast range and tether distance for command protect. Finally, we're adjusting the values on our passive Clockwork Windup to rely on fewer stacks. What does this all mean for Oriana? We really like that Oriana is an interesting, high skill cap champion, but one of the things that was really holding her back was how much you had to fight the interface when playing her. Lowering her global cooldowns is really to improve her responsiveness and kind of amplify your skill. Now it's much more possible to do big epic skill combos with Oriana's ball. Move a ball into position, slow them down, and then shield an ally kind of all in one fell swoop, which is really exciting and really high skill and hard to pull off. We want to make that possible now. The changes to command attack and command dissonance are really to kind of solidify their roles in what they're supposed to do. Command attack is really a positioning skill that allows you to get the ball in position and set up plays, while dissonance is much more about burst damage. Increasing the range on command protect allows Oriana to use her allies more effectively as new avenues of attack. This means every ally you see is a possible way for you to set up a new combo on an enemy. Additionally, her ultimate now goes on a short cooldown whenever it snaps back to Oriana, so say when an ally flashes out of range, you don't waste your ultimate unintentionally. Oriana's not the most tanky champion, so it's not really realistic for her to sit there and auto-attack repeatedly for a long period of time. This passive change simply lets you realistically get a lot out of it. While Nunu is a valuable support, he isn't quite up to par as a jungler. This patch, we're giving him some buffs for jungling, specifically for being a strong counter jungler. We're reducing the cooldown on consume, raising its damage at lower ranks, and reducing the number of attacks required to trigger his passive, Visionary. What were the reasons behind these buffs for Nunu? Because Nunu uses his abilities to get through the jungle, Visionary being up more often lessens his reliance on Golem buff. Consume is really Nunu's primary jungling spell, and so buffing it makes him not only faster in the jungle, but more able to counter jungle since it's really good at stealing big monsters. Global ultimates have started dominating high level play, and teams are almost forced into picking or banning Karthus, Shen, and Soraka every game. In the Jace update, we're raising the cooldowns of their ultimates, especially at high ranks. Why have we chosen these specific nerfs for these three champions? Global ultimates apply a lot of pressure and also don't need to worry about positioning, so to balance them out, they need to have longer cooldowns than other ultimates. With longer cooldowns, teams without global ultimates now have an opportunity to counterattack and apply pressure back to teams that do have them. LeBlanc has become outclassed as a high mobility mage assassin, so we have a few buffs headed her way. We're raising the missile speed on Sigil of Silence, lowering the cooldown of Distortion, and adding a cool interaction with her ultimate. Now, whenever LeBlanc casts both Distortion and the mimicked version back to back, she can choose to jump back to either origin point. What will these buffs do for LeBlanc? Increasing the missile speed on Sigil of Silence means you can't waste the mark it leaves behind by hitting with another spell while it's in flight to the target. The changes to Distortion and Mimic do a few really cool things. First, and I think most importantly, this is a really, really fun change. Seriously, go try it and blink all over the map. It's awesome. It also lets LeBlanc be much more tricky. Now, when you Mimic Distortion, you can choose one of three places to juke to, which will really let you play with your opponent's mind and kind of control them. One of LeBlanc's primary decision points is supposed to be about what spell do I mimic, and this makes mimicking distortion much, much more attractive than it ever was before. Thanks for tuning in to the League of Legends patch preview. Please subscribe to the Riot Games YouTube channel above and leave us your comments just below the video.